Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I rejoice in my spirit because somebody's life must change. Must change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am very happy in my spirit. Give a man fish and he will return back. Begging helplessly. But teach him how to fish and you have empowered him. People go ask you, say, Now wait till Make you rich. Just go tell them, say. People go ask you, say. Now make me go make you rich. Just go tell them, say. Jesus put. assure you you are not rejoicing for nothing you're not rejoicing for nothing in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we look up to you again you're the one who has given us wisdom light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes and let me see that should be the prayer tonight the beauty that makes this heart the whole sing that part as a prayer. Open my eyes, let me see the secrets that can change men. Open my eyes, let me see. Sing it as a prayer. Would you open my eyes, let me see. One more time, sing it. Open Jesus, open our eyes. We can see nothing until you open our eyes. Let tonight, oh God, bring a financial revolution in someone's life. Finally, may someone get this key tonight, oh God, I pray. Open my eyes. Let me.
Proverbs 22, verse 2. I'd like you to just keep standing, just turn to it. Prepare for an experience tonight. I will show you a key by the Spirit. I promise you it will change your life. Proverbs 22, verse 2. Are you there? Read it as loud as you can. One, two, read. One more time. The Bible says, Scripture itself identifies that speaking about wealth, although in the same earth, there are two kinds of people. It doesn't leave us to confusion. It says the rich and the poor, they meet together. God is the maker of them all, but he's not the maker of them so. He created them. They separated themselves into levels. It says the rich and the poor, by whatever means, in the same earth, but they created that difference. God is the maker of them all. He created them as his blessed creation. But they made themselves either rich or poor. One more scripture. Keep standing. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Just the A part. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. I want to prove to you that God never made any man rich or poor. They made themselves so. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Ready? This is an appetizer for tonight. One to read. Just stop there. One more time. The profit of the earth is for who? A certain tribe? A certain race? He says, moreover, God left the profit of the earth and said, whoever finds the key, take it. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. No tribalism, no racism, no gender inequality the prophet of the earth the bible says even the king is served by the field open my eyes and let me see but you open my eyes let me see. hallelujah I'd like you to walk up to 20 people, give them a hug and a congratulations in advance. Tell them your status is changing. No, no, this is for real. Your status is changing. Knowledge, revelation, light. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise and please sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Alright, let's get to the business of the night. There is a lot to do. We're on our way to better days. 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 Sing to yourself just this one time. My status is changing. It's no more than
The Wealthy Place, part two. The Wealthy Place, part two. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our series was interrupted last week, but we're back. To start with tonight, please, I want you to pay attention. Write. You cannot commit so important a thing just to your mind alone. As much as possible, write. The teachings will be free as always. And you can get it. Poverty must give up on your life once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will sign out of that realm forever, never to return, under no circumstance. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when we started off, we talked about a few things. By the way, please and please, I want you to get our teaching on financial dominion. It's a four-part series. It's the foundational teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity i told us we're not going back into those things tithing the spiritual laws and so on and so forth it's going to be counterproductive if we go back the teachings are there i think we did justice get it and listen to it very very well because um we're moving on another paradigm in this series praise the lord let me just do a quick recap i want us to cover as much as as much as we can hallelujah we talked about um, how that is the desire of God for us to prosper. Psalm 35 verse 27. He tells us that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God has pleasure in our prosperity. And then the Bible tells us in Psalm 112 verse 1 and 3. That blessed is the man that fears God. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. You know wealth and riches shall be in his house hallelujah we define financial prosperity as freedom from poverty lack and the negative effects that come with them i'm just doing a quick recap um, and we saw how that some of the negative effects that come with being poor includes fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness and um we also define prosperity as having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish, multiply, and sustain its availability. We define poverty as a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources, often characterized by lack of productivity. Hallelujah. And um, we establish the fact that the church has greatly suffered in this area largely because um, there have been incomplete teachings about prosperity either an emphasis on the spiritual side to tithe and give and, and expect blessings or people have gone to the other side into materialism and carnality and this lust for money both of them are wrong hallelujah I told us how that many pastors do not have financial literacy and how that the church is also an institution an institution is a platform for the transference of knowledge there are many well-meaning pastors they are anointed they love the lord they are born again they are very sincere people they love the sheep of god but they lack financial literacy so when it comes they either do not touch on that subject and leave people to just guess whatever they feel about finances or they touch it but they limit it to what they know and usually it's just tithing and offering and they stop there and so the the general teaching to the congregation is tight and give and then expect blessings and there are so many people in the body of christ favor comes but lack of financial literacy and the formula for wealth keeps driving it out of their lives right and I told us that many preachers do not even know why they are wealthy. They think they are wealthy because they are preaching the gospel. That's not true. You will know at the end of the teaching tonight. Praise the Lord. And so we seek to, in this series, go direct straight to the point. That's why I'm not even talking about tithing 
and giving and all of that we have been able to touch that i want to believe that the average committed person in this place already has this foundational knowledge about tithing as the key that opens the heavens and so on and so forth i want to teach us something that anyone can use and be rich not just a preacher the gospel of prosperity we are teaching in nigeria will only make a preacher rich if you are not a preacher you will not be rich from it what i want to teach you will make anyone i don't care what the situation is hallelujah praise the lord and so we considered a few things um why so many people are poor in the last um discussion that we had we said how that they have not decided to be wealthy they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clear goal lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance and then most importantly lack of the mental transition and i think the media department did justice on that reminding us all through the week never forget this that the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not the money in their pocket the money in your pocket is a receipt for having a healthy mindset or otherwise this money the naira is only a physical expression praise the lord just a physical expression finance can i have some money help me so that some people will wake up now there are some of you who will never understand this teaching until you see real money just any amount just something to hold and then we considered the myths and the mindsets that keep people poor i taught us how that there are mentalities there are there are sayings there are cliches that have been accepted in our society that keep people poor number one is that i'm just doing a quick recap number one is that money and abundance is carnal evil or unnecessary praise the lord there have been this illusion this this teaching okay thank you very much there have been this teaching this illusion that money and abundance is carnal please don't let anyone fool you money is very important say it one more time if you ever trivialize the importance of money in your life you will pay for it dearly by the grace of god i love you too much to lie to you and to spiritualize out the importance of money finance is very important to the quality of your life to your assignment and to the advancement of the kingdom say one more time money is very important the bible never says money is the root of evil it says the love of money and the word there is eros lost for money the kind of ungodly passion to seek money that will take you to hell that's what the bible says is evil it never said money is the root of all evil hallelujah meet number two if god really wants me rich he will make me rich another wrong mindset so many people justify their poverty as being the will of god and sadly many of our elder ones our lovely parents lovely fathers and mothers most of them their generation grew with that illusion of the exclusive sovereignty of god the meaning of that is god is sovereign he does whatever he wants human beings have no contribution to the outcome of their destiny so we have agreed and most of our parents transferred that mindset to us praise the lord wrong mindset if god really wants me rich he will make me rich if god wants you to bath he will bath you if god wants you to go to school he will take you to school no 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 we we have common sense in every other area except finances when you are hungry god does not open the fridge for you he grants you life and energy and you take advantage of that energy and you go and open your fridge and feed yourself right understand this at every point in your christian journey there will always be a role you have to play in determining the outcome of your destiny bishop oyedeko said 
every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a part to play if you be willing and obedient. If there is good in the land, but if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. So that's the second myth. Myth number three, which has brought a lot of deception to the body of Christ, is that tithing is the one and only key to abundance. How many sincere preachers, godly preachers, lovely, wonderful, God-fearing preachers have misled millions of people in Nigeria into the illusion that the moment you are tithing, that is the one and only thing you need to do and everything will change automatically. I am telling you this by the word of the Lord. That's not an accurate teaching. It's a sincere teaching, but it's not true. If that were true, I guarantee you that 90% of the Christians around who have been faithful titers would have had their status change radically. Is that true? Tithing is the law of open heavens. It opens your heavens so that everything you do under that open heavens prospers. But that's not the only key. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Not the key. Keys. Meaning tithing and giving. As powerful as they are. They are the keys that release the treasures from the realm of the spirit. But we must sustain the technology and the formula to make it manifest here and now in our life. Say amen. Meet number four. That's the one you find around so many people in our society today. And I believe some of us were shot. I, I remember one person talking to me, I think over last week or so, and he said he was surprised when I mentioned this. If I can just have a business idea and capital, I will be rich. It's a lie. Tell your neighbor it's not true. Turn to your neighbor and say it's not true. Many of us think the reason... <laughs> see many people still laughing they are still reminiscing on the seriousness of what I said it's as serious as what I'm saying now all I need is 20,000 and I have that um, small shop or I have my fura or yogurt my stand or I have whatever it is so many people believe that this is all they need Give me this plus the business idea I have and I am rich. I can, I can bet you with my life. I can bet you with my life that you will not be rich that way. You will enjoy money for a few weeks or months or highest a year and crash back to where you were. I have tried this too many times with people. Too many times. Businessman, sit down quietly this night and listen there are so many people moving around i'm a businessman i'm a businessman what do you really need capital oh god it's not capital no sir no sir i prove you wrong a thousand times it's not capital i'm not daft i know what i'm saying it's not capital because your physical environment will always be a reflection of your mindset give a poor man money how many who want to be a millionaire have you had in nigeria that got the one million and were able to still remain millionaires after one year have you not heard of people who won lotteries 10 million dollars one million dollars hundred thousand dollars they laugh about it how many people have won cars and from gulda uh, maltina indomie they stand on your television screen and they snap them with the money. Few months later, their mindset has eaten everything in their physical reality. Because until the adjustment takes place here, nothing you do physically will supplement for a wrong mindset. Are we blessed? So the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is their mindset. The biggest difference this is a receipt. If I buy this, um, this gadget, they will give me a receipt. 
The receipt is a sign that I have bought it, not a sign that I will buy it. It's a sign that I've bought it. Look at me. This that I'm holding, if it comes into your life, is only a receipt. It's not the reason why you are rich. It's the proof that you are rich. Are you getting me now? Physical cash coming into your hands is not the reason why you are rich. This is the receipt that you are rich. Is God speaking to us? So if this has not come into your life, then it is a sign that you are not rich. You see that? The rich are not those who have this. They necessarily had to have it because they are rich. Praise the Lord. So we discuss that very quickly. And then, number five, the myth we considered was entitlement mentality. Remember? The feeling that someone is responsible for your success and prosperity. I said it was many of us are angry with our parents, we are angry with our bosses in office, we are angry with our uncles and aunties, angry with the rich people in our family because we think that they are supposed to bless us because they are rich. And we are offended, we are bitter against them and their loved ones. It's an entitlement mentality. It's one of the greatest killers of wealth potentials in Africa. So the moment you become rich, everybody in your family is leeching onto you, hoping that you will meet their needs. There are some people even angry, cursing you. It will never be well with you. You saw my rent expire and you didn't come to pay it. Entitlement mentality. That mentality that transfers the responsibility of your financial destiny to someone else to pay the price for you and then you receive the result. I told us last week that how many poor people go to meet rich people for help? Sir, my rent has expired. How much is the rent? 250000 or 300000 or 500000 or whatever it is. And then the rich man counts the money and gives the poor man and he never sits down to say, Uncle, by the way, I'm tired of coming to beg you. Is there something you will do to teach me? They will never say that. What will they say? Thank you. And they will go back and carry their stumbling block of poverty and return after one year asking the same thing again. They will come back and find out that within that one year, the uncle has built another house. They knock the house and they say, your uncle does not live here again. We are his tenants. And you go back to his house. His status has changed a thousand times and nothing has changed in the life of the same person. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us? So that very wrong mentality. And then we, we started, we stopped at how to be wealthy. I was teaching us directly, straight to the point without ambiguity. How do you become rich? Number one, you must decide to be wealthy. I told us that. Many people do not decide to be wealthy. They hate poverty. They wish to be prosperous. But they never decide to be wealthy. The difference between a wish and a decision is that the difference between a wish and a decision is that a wish a wish is just a desire just a general desire over something a wish is a general desire are you getting my point now but a decision is a strong desire. Thank you. A strong desire that is backed up by the willingness to pay the price and take responsibility. The responsibility that will produce that outcome. Are you getting the point now? So many people have not decided to be rich. They hate poverty. They are angry about it. They admire wealthy people. They wish they sit down and keep their dreaming. But they have not decided. Say, I decide to be rich. Say, I decide to be wealthy. No, no, no. It's not carnal. Say it from with every sense of spirituality and seriousness. I decide to be rich. Hallelujah. 
it's not enough to say i hate poverty how many people have said it the more they say it, the closer it comes to them because that's not the key to exiting it out decision decision time does not change things time only reveals the true state of things only decisions change things so if your level financially and that of your loved ones is going to change don't wait for time one day go better is an illusion it is your decision that will change it. Say amen. So decide to be wealthy. And you must make your decision a goal. What is a goal? A goal is a desire that you have set as a project. You are ready to channel all your energy and your time to achieving it. Very important. If you do not set goals, you don't set a financial goal to be wealthy, you will never be rich. You will dream about it. You will see yourself in a dream rich. You will see yourself driving cars in a dream. You will see yourself building houses. It will never happen in your lifetime. It will stop in the realm of dreams there. How many people have dreamt of so many things? They get up in the morning laughing and happy. What happened? They say, my life must change. What happened? I had a dream. In the dream, I saw myself counting dollars. I saw myself counting pounds. In the dream, I saw myself building a house for my father. It will remain as a dream until you set it as a goal a goal enough to pursue it hallelujah and then the second the second key on how to be wealthy is that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance i jumped that and that's what we're going to discuss today and then number three under how to be wealthy i taught us the mental transitions that bring wealth remember i told us that people are categorized into three please listen follow very closely everywhere inside and outside i told us there are three kinds of people remember as far as the distribution of wealth and mindset is concerned number one are people who have poverty mentality or poor mindset and naturally their poor physical reality so their mindset and their physical realities are the same are we following please are you getting me so here we have um person a his mindset is poor his physical reality is poor number two we have someone who has transited mentally so he has a wealthy mentality but his physical reality is still poor are we there and then number three the wealthy place now we have someone whose mentality is the wealth mentality and his physical environment has now become his mindset and i told us that every one of us can find our financial positions in these three illustrations most of us really most of us have poor physical realities by poor i don't mean you are begging for food but there is that state of perpetual insufficiency where people think about money they worry about money look at pastors every service is money 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 you can settle the issue of finance and face more important issues finance is not the most important issue so it's better to handle it once and then you can do some other things very important so here we have the guy who has a poor mentality and his physical environment he thinks the reason why he's poor is because he was born from a, a poor family that may have some elements of truth but that may not be the reason why he's currently poor give this person money something in his mindset will reduce him back please are you following my example say amen and then when he begins to transit mentally right we'll discuss that now this guy begins to get the mindset of the rich and all of a sudden this environment starts pushing him away something in this environment starts pushing him because his mindset is changing now at this point level two he has the mindset of the rich but his physical condition is still of the poor and i told you this is the most frustrating level in a man's life because when you talk to a rich man he's impressed with your mindset but then your physical reality is still like a poor man so it's like you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty but if you continue and you do what i'm about to show you shortly you will move inevitably no power in existence i tell you will stop you from stepping into the wealthy place there is a place called the wealthy place thou has caused men to ride over our heads 
we walked through water and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place hallelujah so let's start off tonight's teaching thank you jesus i'll start tonight by examining the mindset of the rich versus the mindset of the poor write it very quickly if you like you can create a column into two you can write one rich the other one poor let's see how the rich think let's go into their minds and see how wealthy people think since we have established the fact that the prosperity of any man is not just from the physical money that comes but the quality of his mental transition there is a way that the wealthy think there is a way that the rich think that brings financial resources to them and there is a way that the poor think are you ready now so we're going to be contrasting and most of us are going to be seeing ourselves we'll be seeing the mindsets that we have had that we have preserved that have been responsible for the poverty in our lives and the goal is that as i teach you begin to switch switch in your mind the moment you see yourself in that category of the poor you must begin to have a determination to change praise the lord you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward that's what he's doing in our minds right now you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward the first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich write that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance every wealthy man justly wealthy not crooks not corrupt people everyone justly wealthy especially in the kingdom they believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives if they are to get into the wealthy place they believe that They believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny still the same point while the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in modern nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying how can they lie sharia we are poor because god wants it that way right they are the ones who teach oh god give them so that through them we'll get it's a devilish mentality don't ever use that kind of word again you are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny you disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom say amen so mindset number one the rich believe in taking responsibility say after me in the name of jesus i take responsibility for the outcome of my finances in the name of jesus i take responsibility for my financial destiny say in the name of jesus i stop blaming parents i stop blaming friends i stop blaming circumstances i take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny the moment you get to that point you are beginning to be like the rich my brother did not give me the hundred thousand otherwise i would have bought more goods and then my shop would have expanded you are a liar that's not the reason leave your brother alone and leave him in peace he may have done you bad but that's not the reason the poor love passing responsibility they love it when they say no it's because of government no that's not the reason the flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there see that number two 
the rich are very disciplined and patient people underline the word discipline and patience the rich are very disciplined and patient people while the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient financially speaking and generally speaking the poor are so careless careless over their financial resources they are not disciplined most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things no no the poor are the ones who always want sharp sharp money they always want all kinds of things every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience hallelujah is a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking bike because he's trying to build his wealth a wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building a poor man if he gets 100 or 1 million naira he will rent a house of 600,000 buy a suit of 100,000 and die with the remaining 400,000 very impatient people and there is a pressure listen especially if for us the young people there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it right the moment someone graduates everybody's saying so how far how far how far what is happening and then we try to look for all kinds of ways you kill yourself and buy a suit of hundred thousand and that's all your savings home and abroad you buy a watch of twenty five thousand buy a shoe of thirty thousand and where you stand the people you are talking to are so poor they don't even know the difference between a watch of 2000 and a watch of 25000 so the effort to impress them has been wasted hallelujah the rich are very disciplined people very disciplined they don't waste money go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat you will be shocked you will think they just won a lottery madam he did yes and you say bring it and they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money when their friends come in guy how far now i sit down sit down don't worry don't worry i will arrange things for you this is a poor man look at what he's doing is that one is not just giving it's called financial carelessness are we learning something and then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually number three The rich and wealthy believe in the law of process. They believe in the law of process. They know that it takes time to build wealth. Wealth, true wealth and prosperity is a function of time. The rich believe in the law of process. The poor always want results without process. That's why they get into all kinds of things. That's why they are deceived and swindled around. They get into all kinds of things because they are poor. They, from the mind. Not from their business. From the mind. The poor like processes. with They like results without process. So you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you. Right? Like we have many in our, in our society. We've had so many stories of those people. They call you around. They act as though they are strangers. Or they send you an email. You have just won 2 million US dollars or 10 million and you are not even afraid to read the mail. You open it and smile and they write there, they say, don't tell anybody. And you keep quiet. You call your friend and say, ah, it's miracle service. The prayer is, it's not miracle service. You are about to get into trouble. How many people have been swindled of, of, of their hard earned money because of getting into schemings let me tell you anything that does not subscribe to the law of process run away from it breakthrough comes instantly but preparation from that for that breakthrough takes time it is the manifestation that is instant not the preparation in one day you can become a millionaire but after a season of preparation are you getting the point now you don't prepare one day no sir no sir it took Joseph one day to become a prime minister, but it took him 12 years to prepare for that position. It took Moses one day 
to exit uh, the people out just one plague overnight but it took him 40 years at the backside of the mountain hallelujah it took jesus three days only three days to fulfill his assignment he died was buried resurrected in three days the plan of salvation was over but it took him about 30 years to prepare so the rich where are we the rich believe in the law of process and the poor jump process right they jump a lot of process they want result sharp sharp someone just comes with a phone and say guy buy this phone now and you will sell it you didn't ask him where he got the money the person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an arm robber and most likely he is and you are there because you want it sharp sharp may the lord deliver us from this sharp sharp mentality in the name of jesus christ never be under pressure to prove to people that i want to make it sharp sharp you want to start a shop in one day and you want to have 100 customers in one day you want to start a restaurant in one day and you want to be the leading that's what has led men of god to witchcraft they start a church and in one year they want 5,000 members in one year the man wants protocol in one year he wants to go on air in one year he wants to have the best of sound the best of church activity so he will have to go and, and bow down to some godless things how many people are in occults today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occults because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time it takes time it takes time warren buffett one of the well the world's wealthiest man I think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now. A billionaire. Over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout. He started, he knew what I'm teaching you now. As early as age 8. But it took him at least 4 or 5 decades. Are you seeing that? The path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed. You can accelerate it god is the god of speed not rush he gives men speed but he does not rush men tarry in jerusalem as desperate as i want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth tarry in jerusalem until ye be endued with power say i receive grace to follow the due process that brings lasting wealth Say it one more time. I receive the grace to follow the due process. Hallelujah. Number four now. The rich always plan and set goals. The rich always plan and set goals. While the poor are always impulsive and reactive. Always impulsive. The rich always plan. If they want to build, they settle down. Like the Bible says, they count the cost. How much will it take us to build? Okay, it will take 7 million. How much do we have now? 200,000. It's nothing compared to what we want. What can 200,000 do right now? 200,000 can buy at least, we can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand. Come and pour it intimidate the devil with it put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home you are taking a step they plan but the, the the poor they behave they can go out in one day i've said it again many of our parents do that in one day they go back and come up with things they don't plan for this is how the poor let a poor man enter a boutique he just planned to go and get shoe and his budget was seven thousand but he enters a boutique and the blue light is there 
everything is shining and they say they just brought this i mean they just came from italy this is from dubai this is from turkey this is original touch it feel it and he's looking carelessness is about to happen right away because he's about to be erratic he's under pressure say about guy you don't pass this level now and he say oh yeah how much how much he say, oh yeah because of you bring 13k he's paying the remain the hundred thousand he took there was for something but because there's no planning he ended up buying something that was not you bought a cloth that was not your size you knew it was not your size but they convinced you so much the blue light made you to see it and you bought it and you went home you are angry with yourself everybody your friend how about you're a bad friend you didn't advise me whereas you were there bragging feeling like a rich man a wealthy man is not embarrassed to tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house it tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level and then you go there and while you are buying food you find some other people and they say ah your salary is there we will die with you here until you buy this and you end up spending half of your money have you seen that happen to our parents they collect salary and over the weekend the money is finished they think it's because the money is small the man was saying that when he was a primary staff at a managerial level weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset always plan and set goals always plan and set goals don't be impulsive don't just do things because you have to do them it's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified otherwise do not be embarrassed at all don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall. Set goals. Set goals. If you don't need a car, don't buy it. If you need only three trousers, walk with three trousers. There's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket. You flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it. And there's why not invest in your mind? Praise the Lord. I've told us again and again in this place stop trying to look rich pay the price and be rich there's nothing honorable about trying to look rich pay the price and be rich you can see a wealthy man especially here in the north you can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire and he can just wear his jalabia and wear his pants and just be smiling no pressure he can even enter a golf to the bank whereas the poor man collected loan of seven million bought a car of five million rented an apartment of two million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt and the poor man just enters there's nothing and he just enters how are you you see him using a simple phone whereas somebody you ask the person how much is in, in your your account 500 naira how much phone are you using 130 iphone what six you just bought it it just came out and you bought it nobody to communicate to because you don't have any any collection of rich sensible people who are you sending a mail to how is the mail going to increase your worth hallelujah say i refuse to be under pressure i set goals and i work with goals hallelujah number five the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones oh how powerful the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor the rich every time they see challenges number one they never call them problems rich men never say problem they say challenges hallelujah and they see challenges as 
a stepping stone. They see challenges as an opportunity to learn more. They see challenges as an opportunity to grow more. But poor people. Let a poor man start a business and it crashes. And you hear him regretting. It's you oh, that told me, I've, I've always hated poultry. I hate chickens. I hate poultry. They can die anyhow. And the, the rich man says, no, my own. I lost beds three times. Three sets. I lost 5,000 beds in one day. And the poor, I, I, I can't take that. And they remain poor. Because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone. The rich see challenges as opportunities look up please for a while how have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life especially financial challenges hallelujah what is your interpretation of challenges do you see them as an opportunity to learn more to know more to access greater light or do you see them as stumbling blocks there are many people today many people today they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment whereas somebody who was poor kept applying kept applying and now the person is working in an oil company say after me from today i see challenges as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier. Another, it will become the reason why he will never move forward. Hallelujah. You ask your parents, for instance, why have you not set up something now? They say, look, let me tell you, you are a small boy, that's why. In 1970, is it two or three? I can't remember exactly. I think we did something like that. And then your mother will concur. Yes, we did something like that. What did we even do? We started producing ice and nobody bought it. The ice will freeze there. They will take light. It will melt again. It will freeze there and the business packed up. And because of that, because of that, they have seen that challenge as an obstacle. They've seen it as a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to see challenges as obstacles. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunities. Please say it. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunity. Your attitude towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it two people can have a carryover two people can have carryovers for one he just looks and says so this is how my life will end so i'm truly dull that thing they said is not a lie i'm seeing the proof right in front of me whereas somebody looks and says there's no problem this is a challenge I will come back and I will give it to life. Because of this thing, I will establish a university in the future. I'm on my way coming. I may cry right now, but I see it as an opportunity to rise. Whereas for somebody, he looks and says, if you like, call me a dollar, you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two people will be um, intimidated and, and, and affected by armed robbers armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house is that good no but i'm saying they rob the house they seize jewelries seize everything two years after that robbery one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass they have improved on it the armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house have you seen people like that the door that they broke they now brought security doors whereas one neighbor is still angry using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry you see him tie it and say everybody that comes to the house say come this is where this idiot came and stole our money two years afterwards he has seen that as an obstacle are you getting what i'm saying now he has refused to move forward whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders 
or they will become a load that will destroy you say after me in the name of jesus i change my attitude towards challenges say it again in the name of jesus i change my attitude towards challenges someone was fired two people were fired for one it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life 10 years after being fired he became a miserable man turned into a miserable husband turned into a miserable father and 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 the list goes on and on for someone the moment they fired him he said no the owner of this company does not have two heads i will make up my mind and in three years he's already employing 100 people attitude i know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years they said thank you for firing me it was the best thing that happened to me the giant in me was sleeping that 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 firing letter did something to me i got interested in the issue of finances when they wanted to lock us in the prison when we could not pay the sound right some <laughs> challenges can be a gift brothers and sisters it will shake you the day the landlord says come out and he's packing your clothes out and you're saying oh god don't embarrass me i will go but just wait in the night i will run and give you your key and he says no way this morning here and now carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house and you are now you are embarrassed and you are moving with your wife pregnant and twins and people are saying look at irresponsible men how can this man the twins and then the woman is still pregnant sometimes it will take you to the cave of adulam like david and that's where you begin to sit down and say look something is wrong i'm getting something wrong challenges really bring us to the place of destiny they create defining moments in our lives but your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there or not hallelujah is god speaking to us so the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles number six are you getting blessed the rich have great courage and persistence the rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up poor people easily give up they start a business it does not work they quit they start building a house it does not work they quit but the rich they are courageous people when one door closes they force another one to open when one strategy fails they start another one wealthy people are highly courageous people they are persistent very persistent hallelujah you can see somebody who is rich five years after he told you in the name of jesus i'm coming out of poverty nothing has changed in his life but you come and meet him and his goal is still intact you laugh at him and say bros why are you fooling yourself just just agree that it's not your turn to shine and the person will tell you i'm still reading the book five years from the time he made that decision he's still studying the books he's still growing he doesn't have a car yet but he's still growing he's still staying in the old house but he's still growing you knew him with that one trouser five years later on he's still wearing it but he's still growing that's a rich man his status will most certainly change what have you given up on god gave you the direction god gave you the grace but he never told you the road will be easy preachers lied to you that if you are anointed it will be a bed of roses preachers lied to you that if god is with you it will just be a walkover preachers lied to you that if you are anointed you will start a business and it will be flawless because the holy spirit is at work in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell failure is a prerequisite in the school of success you have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life you have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure what you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth it will become the throne that you will sit upon rich people have failed you cannot imagine you cannot imagine how many times 
they will start 10 businesses all of them will fail they will do a lot of things it will not work but persistence and courage when everybody is criticizing them they are busy working when everybody is saying why must you keep doing this eh someone tries to ask two ladies out you ask the first one say sorry i'm already engaged you ask the second one say no 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 god has already revealed my husband to me you are not the one after two opportunities you will never ask a lady again to get married to because you sit down and say Kai, me, i i can't i'm not a fool i can't be taking embarrassments like this. you will marry oh let me tell you in advance if you don't take the courage to continue ladies shout continue every door cannot be closed no sir one door will most certainly open hallelujah very important are you a courageous person are you persistent over your goals or do you just give up easily i refuse to give up in the name of jesus you're a pastor here you you started a walk and it looks like nothing is happening and you are truly called but you are about to give up you're a businessman about to give up you are a family man about to give up refuse to give up and i tell you at the other side of your pain is celebration like a woman right when she goes in to deliver there are times she may want to give up and the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her and telling her don't worry don't worry say is it like that for every woman no it's only me they say it's like that just just give up don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through cs as painful as it is the baby still comes the bible says do not be weary in well doing he said for we will reap in due season if you faint not but if you faint you will not reap say i refuse to faint let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth hallelujah ready number seven the rich are great risk takers while the poor are always afraid to take risks wealthy people are great risk takers they step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water if I perish, I perish. If I fail, I will learn from it. If I succeed, let God be praised. Poor people are the easy goers. Hey, be careful, oh. Eh? You want to buy a golf and start a transport business. Somebody said, you know, the way Nigeria is, they will go and hijack your car somewhere. Have you not seen people minding their business and armed robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it? The rich are great risk takers not foolish risk takers but great risk takers in 2010 when we were having the kingdom wealth summit i taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is r i s k spell it r i s k when you are spelling faith in the finance world that's how it is spelled you must take risks You must take risks not foolish risks but you must take risks it's a risk to marry it's a risk to be single it's a risk to start a building project it's a risk to get a job don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to sabo every day for work is that not true you can have an accident something can happen god forbid but a crisis can break out something can happen that can affect you is it not a risk but it's a risk worth taking. When you tell somebody you want to marry him, is it not a risk? You are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly, you are not 100% sure of. You don't know what he can become. Yet you are willing to do that. It's a risk. Life is a risk. Not taking a risk is a bigger risk. You must take risks. This ministry is a risk nobody gave us a guarantee that crowds will be inside and outside faith is spelled r-i-s-k when the people were setting up the sound in the morning none of you signed an agreement that by five o'clock you will be here none of you signed an agreement 
but it took courage we had to step out haven't prayed haven't fasted we have believed god and we're taking a risk miracle service is a risk you don't know who is coming with whatever sickness people can bring the dead people can bring anybody but you, you are willing to take that risk are you willing to take risks or you are part of the easy people when i was in secondary school there was a barbie saloon called easy does it you do that for life you will fail oh just just take it easy don't don't do this customers didn't come today close your shop it's a sign that god is not with you who told you it's a sign that god is not with you it's a sign that you are growing it's only a witch as a baby who will just get up imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up mommy where's the food that's a that's a wizard that's that's an illegitimate child that's that's a that's a, a breed between angels and men that's not a pure human being and jesus grew everybody say it jesus your king of kings he grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men if jesus grew you must grow hallelujah lastly number eight the difference between the rich and the poor the rich have a positive mental attitude please write write it write it down as fast as you can the rich have a positive mental attitude please pay attention to what i'm telling you because after this i'm about to teach you what i call the grand formula for wealth and abundance i give you a guarantee I give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this, even the dullest of us, if you follow what I'm giving you, you will be rich. And rich does not mean buy a car, buy a house. That's survival. The rich, write it down please, have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. While the poor are easily influenced. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. The poor, they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves. And so, when people begin to talk about them, they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. So many of us are here right now. So many of us are here the opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich what would they say what if i fail will they laugh at me the other time they saw me frying akara and the news spread around samaru so what so what about it have you forgotten that if you remain persistent those who laugh at you will laugh with you that the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed it's an opinion there are people today joshua selman is to them a great man of god that they love there are people today joshua selman is a devil and a fake man of god there are people joshua selman is whatever they want to call i learned by experience to ignore the opinion of others and to move forward if you follow what people say about your life they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body whether you do well they will talk about you whether you do bad they will talk about you they are still talking about Jesus and we are still talking about Satan everybody in between will be talked about so deliver yourself tonight in the name of Jesus Christ from the influence of the opinion of others they are spreading rumors around that i like money is it true no mind your business say see 
I heard that you are the one that said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. What, look, let me tell you, trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying, of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true. They now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire. There can be smoke without fire. Ask those who smoke cigarettes. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Sing it one more time. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let them keep talking while you produce the results. Anybody can say what he wants to say about you. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying can i tell you something no matter what people say about you the world is full of troubles very soon they'll forget about your issue another issue will come and supersede your issue so you can as well let the sleeping dog lie are you getting what i'm saying now if a lady runs here right now and says this baby is joshua selman's baby i've told people i will only ask one question online how did you get pregnant online are you getting me not that i'll sit down and say hey, hey i need to gather a committee now my reputation is at stake i'm a dead man already let the one who sent me defend him if he's comfortable with it fine and good ah i i will never stab myself sleep because he said i called you i called you you didn't pick that's how all men of god are that's your opinion am i like that no so i go to bed learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life ah mama this and that is a wicked woman every time we come to fresh water the way she looks at us are you wicked no so mind your business but you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody how about you man you know am i wicked is it not me that gave your child school fees no 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 save yourself all that nonsense rich people have a healthy mental attitude don't think they will not talk about you just like you have spoken about others let me assure you your turn is coming when you see someone gossiping and talking just pity him and nod your head because his own is coming good measure pressed down shaken together yes for sure you have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of god must it be like this must it be like that the day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team at that point you will know it takes grace leadership wisdom and audacity when you see preachers preaching and you see men of god standing up to concord to what they are saying they can relate with it are you getting the point when you fast and pray the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here you think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here you wouldn't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand i once watched some a christian comedy show they were doing an auditioning for comedians these guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places and they came together and when they came together i was just looking i didn't laugh for one minute they were afraid their jokes disappeared archbishop benson idahosa said until you do what somebody has done twice don't talk about him after two years you mean this guy still has a small shop like this how about god don't fall our hand and then the day you open your own that looks like looks like a restaurant and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night you will do bonanza 50 percent nobody will still come at that point you go back to that bros and say bros you try you're well done 
say after me in the name of Jesus I have a healthy mental attitude about myself and I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream say it I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams they will talk about you they will laugh they will scorn you it's a sign you are making progress may your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you may your life be the news in their secret place that every time they are talking they say my god they are trying to criticize you but they are announcing you by extension so many people came for koinonia as a result of criticism they came to find out what is all this how can a young man be so anointed and when they came some of them from outside their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down at the end of that meeting they have brought more than 50 people to koinonia criticism can be a great tool of publicity don't stop yourself from shining is god speaking to us Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. hallelujah the day i found this key i shouted i not oyedepo's i will never be poor my own i shouted shouted where is the document let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till jesus returns ready write this down the formula for wealth and abundance i told you there is an exact formula there is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do number two your ability open bracket your skill expertise proficiency and then you can close it your ability to do what you do your ability to do what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you The amount of money listen listen the amount of money we receive this is a law please listen i'm giving you a key that will set you free forever the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand for what you do number two your ability to do it and number three the difficulty in replacing you look at what you just wrote
the demand for what you do, your ability to do what you do, and the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you. This is the grand key. The irrefutable law. When you break prosperity to its unit, the atom of prosperity is this. The amount of money Joshua Selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what I do. My ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me. The difficulty in getting another alternative to me. Let's take it one by one. Number one, the demand for what you do. This is the formula for wealth, brothers and sisters. I searched and I found it. Every millionaire I studied, every billionaire I studied, every wealthy family, every wealthy church, every wealthy business subscribe to this formula. The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me. The amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do, your ability to do what you do, and the difficulty in replacing you. Write this down. Never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it. Never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it. This is what makes a lot of people fail financially. You are answering a question nobody is asking. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Look at this. Look at this. If, if this is my business for instance the level to which I will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this is that true? if there is no demand for this who will pay you for it? nobody so many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide the first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it if there are no children in a place why will you sell pampas there is no demand for it are you getting what I'm saying never try to start a business when you want to get a job Trust God to get a job in a place, a corporation, a firm, where there is a demand for their service. Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service. Are you seeing that now? When there was a demand, what happened? They were rich. They had money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Typewriters. Those who sell typewriters today, if they did not change, will they be rich? Because there is no more demand. Never try to provide any service when there is no demand. This is the reason why ministers have their churches full. Because there is a demand for what they are giving. They think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel. Hear me, Koinonia. This crowd, inside and outside, is here tonight because there is a demand. Are you getting what I'm saying? This ministry is excelling not just because God called us. God called us, yes, but we are responding to a demand. For as long as there is a demand for my anointing, I remain relevant. For as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that I teach, they will continue to be relevant. The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do 
the demand for it. You started a business. You never found out whether there was a demand for it. That's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses, the first thing they do is they send envoys, representatives, to come and give them statistics. They are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand. They will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail, they will still succeed. That's how the world they think. Is God speaking to us? Write this down. Continue the points that you wrote at first. You either create a demand first. When you want to provide any kind of service, spiritual, financial, educational, whatever, you must either create a demand for it first. Open bracket. Through exposure, orientation, and advertisement. You either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand. Look up, please. Okay, write, write it down and look up. You either create a demand for what you want to offer. That means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it. Let me tell you something. Look up. This is the key behind the wealth of Igbo people. I'm not being biased. An Igbo man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for. That's the reason why when others are running away somewhere, he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there. Unconsciously. Unconsciously. Many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling. As at, as at when the phones come into Nigeria, It depends on which one you're talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that. What our protocol used now, right? That's how it started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now, until phones came, we, we had that one that you dial, right? You touch it and then it goes back. You continue and then it goes back. 73142 and then your state code. You, you remember that, right? Watch this. Some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said, no, we have something to offer. And this is what they said. These people do not know about that possibility. So we use advertisement to create a demand. When they brought out Indomie in Nigeria, what happened? They use advertisement and you are watching. They show a beautiful lady and she picks up the, the Indomie. And she's taking it and you are just celebrating. What they are doing is they are creating a demand. Immediately after that, you say, eh, please, go and buy me um, this and that and that. They create a demand for it. Or they meet an existing demand. Write this down. Always respond to demands and you will be rich. Respond to demands. I think it was the last school of ministry students. I was teaching them on finance in school of ministry. And I told them, if I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I won't sell pure water. If I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I will do mobile toilets. Is there a demand for it? You are joking. You are joking. Sooner or later, no matter how bold you stand, you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m. in the afternoon. For a night vigil, Abba, you will need to ease yourself. And I won't be there. You will even know it's my own. But you just see me smiling. The goodness of God. As they are worshipping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately? That they will be willing to do anything. May God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You would demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? 
When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret, a big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there's still, there are still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the marketers went? Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of... Have you seen people take water? Somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange. Take another one. Take another one. That's money going. Five, five naira or ten naira if it's cold. Right? And 50 naira just disappeared. Right now. Bam, 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 bam. And the person selling it is smiling. And the person consuming it is paying. Every day you must bath. At least, I believe. Yes. You should bath. I'm speaking to the wider audience, not just you. There are thousands of people following. Right? So the demand for soap will never stop. And the demand is so high. Every day, somebody's birthday, photographers will never run out. Are you getting me? Restaurants will never pack out. If they pack out, it's a demonic thing. Because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day. If you are busy or you don't have money at least once. If you are fasting, that's alright. Praise God. I'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands. Those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich. Because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself. It's a law. Whatever you cannot do, Guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves. Always, write this down please, let's hurry up. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. I repeat, always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. Never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand. The demand. Watch this. Let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand. Watch this. As a man of God, do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest? Because there is a high demand for that grace. Are you getting me? There is a high demand Usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service. There are people who because of distance cannot come for every service. But during the miracle service they will pay the price and come. Hallelujah. Because there is a demand. So if 
the demand for this anointing continues koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher are you getting what i'm saying now is there a demand for what you do or are you just doing it have you ascertained that there is a demand the office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed never try to answer a question nobody is asking the second point your ability to do what you do we said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability your skill your expertise ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do skill and ability there is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance please never forget this there is a direct relationship between skill between expertise between competence and proficiency and financial abundance it's not enough to be anointed it's not enough to have something to say or just to talk there must be skill there must be skill you are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house there is skill you see that i'm preaching you think i'm just talking until i break down the psychological implication of the things i'm saying and you see all the things that are interplaying in the midst of my sermon you are laughing in the midst of my sermon i'm rebuking you in the midst of my sermon i'm challenging you all of this requires skill it's not just anointing are you getting what i'm saying your ability to do what you do i love how some people that peel orange have you seen those people that sell orange they are so flawless you bring orange to them and you see them talking they're just talking and peeling it when you see a master do something it becomes flawless that's how you must be if you want to be rich don't think rich people are dafts rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise we pray in tongues we fast but organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it they think it's carnal they think it's not spiritual so the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people you enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place you speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground there is a lot of skill and proficiency to it if you think it's so easy try it and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's why you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes there is a skill not just a spirit the bible says and david led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands david did not throw goliath just through the anointing it took skill the benjamites theologically speaking they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows in other words you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it they were that skilled so don't you think god just came upon this guy samson was not just anointed alone he was skilled bezalel have you read about bezalel the spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him the three hebrew boys the bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in they were found 10 times better how many times in what you do do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant nobody likes your food something is wrong there is a demand for it but there is no skill and you think it's demons you are fasting and running around your parlor whereas you should go and settle down and meet a caterer not a mediocre a caterer by the truth 
it will cost you by the truth wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste you are paying somebody one million just to talk to you but they value it that much how many believers can pay for knowledge they don't want to they just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre is God speaking to us it takes skill what he's playing he didn't just learn it by the anointing an anointing came upon his skill the fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice what skill are you lifting up to God to anoint he said he will anoint the works of your hands I'm not just talking of business I'm talking of skillful business see yet thou a man diligent 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 skillful many preachers are not skillful many business people are not skillful many employers and employees are not skillful skill is not just an impartation it is learned it is learned it will cost you you will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn but are you willing everybody say ability I made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value I want to offer my generation I will be a master in it let me tell you as you see me like this don't don't let these suits and all these things deceive you I'm such a workaholic you would not like my life you will like me when you see me on suit standing if you come close to me you will run away from me because my life is irritating there's no room for laziness whatsoever. There are things I do every day no matter how much I'm tired. Do you think preparing for this, you don't want to know how many books were read. You don't know how many books I read, how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy. If you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube? Listen to them in fasting and prayer. Converted them to MP3s to listen to them. Listen to three hours, six hours videos and summarize them in major points. Work on them. Edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it. That's hard work, brother. And all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say, wow, the sermon is impressive. Are you getting what I'm saying? I returned back. We, we went to Bida on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I was there. On Monday, Tuesday, I passed through Abuja to Kogi State to go and greet the family of, of our dear one who transited. And from there, I returned. The School of Ministry students were there. I think it was, was it yesterday, right? I returned. As I returned, I just went to take my bath and rush. We were here having lectures from 6 to about past 10. I had barely rested when I got up and then I had to plan, do a lot of things, had to run to town, see a few people this afternoon, I am here. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm off to Kaduna. We have a meeting in Kaduna. From Kaduna, we're passing straight to Kano for an evening meeting. Sunday, we're back, 3 o'clock on the dot. There is lecture, school of ministry. Monday, there is counseling from morning till night and next week is my birthday. Hello, don't you ever, hold on, don't, Talk, we'll talk about birthday after the service. If you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money, change your mind tonight. You don't know how hard they work. There are people, 6 o'clock, their shops are open. They close past 12. There are others who open to 12 and they close to 7. Skill. Diligence. You get up and you say you're a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success you say, according to Brian Tracy according to you what is it you get up and you're a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages as you are preaching they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from and they will tell you the site you downloaded no originality it takes skill you think it's easy to to buttress points I can communicate any point and sing a song to support it listen 
it's not just anointing it is skill right you know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well you just know every time you hear them you are kneeling down find out how many things are out of bounds for them things they love so much he that desires mastery is temperate in all things what are you willing to give up to be skillful don't just say ah apostle is blessed guy koinonia is lucky oh wait until you see our leadership trainings wait and see the 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 the, the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders wait and see the way we build them you come and see the the various departments you think these guys are just standing by default look at the ushers standing and position they have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves but you before you get to the ground somebody has come to hold you it's a skill because they are holding people who are bigger than them there is a skill we are that meticulous so don't just say god is prospering koinonia kai we are blessed we are blessed through skill hallelujah let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere skill and expertise is the key is the key to promotion and increased salary you see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss Tell him be skillful be skillful then you can pray stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful let me tell you something i humorously tell people if i'm your boss and you are not skillful i can be a good pastor to you but i'll fire you and i'll fire you because i'm a serious christian hallelujah i will never entertain a worker in church for instance i mean maybe there is I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere and you think because we are members of koinonia you are not serious you will never get the job never get the job i don't do all those kinds of things say remember we are from the same place whether we are from the same room if you have not demonstrated the skill if you are so much of a liability for me i will bless you with direct money so that you will go but not to commit things to you he gave unto some five some two and one are according to their several ability not their prayer request their ability their ability i hammer it on the workers to be skillful and it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice you must become skillful at something you must become an expert in something you can't become jack of all trades and master of none you have to lay your hands on something be a master in and I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand. Write it down. Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand. The person who babs me is here in Koinonia. He is so skillful. I love him so much and he babs me. No matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I, can, I can help you, I can teach you, but I won't do that. How many people are not skillful in what they do? We are prayerful, but we are not skillful. Say, I receive grace to be skillful. Let me tell you the truth. Skill is an asset. Skill is an asset. If this guy is so broke, if he is so broke today that nothing moves, all he needs to do is go to a hotel in Abuja just ask for permission to sit somewhere and then he will begin to play and someone will see him and say can you come and play for one program what's your cost and he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill 
not at the mercy of God alone, at the mercy of your skill. Man of God, your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry. Your leadership skill, your financial intelligence, what you are receiving right now, there are people standing outside, no seats for them. There are people looking through the window. They are passionate to receive that skill. And I guarantee you, in a short time, their lives will show. Meditate on these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. There is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful. It's a combination of grace and power. Anointed and skillful. Not only that you are anointed to sing, you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional. You are a businessman. You are not just a businessman. Offering services, you are exceptionally skilled. When your contemporaries look at you, they name you after your competence. You walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill. Even your enemies will recommend you and say, please promote this guy. We hate him. But there is nobody in this company who can do it as him. I gave you a story of somebody in this country. He works three jobs. Three jobs. And he works only three times in a week. He is so skillful. He is the brain behind many successful companies in Nigeria. I will not mention the names of the companies. You will be surprised. They beg him. He works only three times. Three times in a week. And the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500,000. Minimum. And he works only three times. Skill will defy race. Skill will defy gender. Skill will defy age. If you are skillful, the world will honor you. That's why Wole Soinka received the Nobel Prize. Nobody said you are from Africa. That's why Zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people. Skill defies age. I'm giving you a key. If you sit down in mediocrity, you will beg for bread. I choose to be skillful in every area. I choose to be exceptional. I avoid premature manifestation. While others are running, let them run. I will stay back and I will sharpen the knife. You are a drummer, be skillful. I've hammered on these guys. You don't want to know how skillful these guys are. I've seen their diligence. Our technical people, we emphasize skill, not just anointing brothers and sisters. It takes skill. It takes skill. It takes skill. The difference between CNN or BBC and one Christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill. It's not anointing. You watch some channels and you are angry. You are angry. Did they have to do it this way? They want cheap labor. Rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this, they refuse. They say there's one brother who offered to help us. And they remain in mediocrity to their detriment. Powerful message from the throne. But nobody can listen. Many people try to write books. And they don't consult with people. They bring out a book that is. The message is deep. But the skill, the artistry in writing it is not there. T.D. Jakes wrote one skillful book. Woman thou art loose. And he made four million dollars from one book. Four million dollars. Multiply that by 210 and it will give you the Naira equivalent. One man's skill. Build him out of poverty. One skill. You have written 10 books. Nobody even knows. Because you wrote every, you wrote like you are talking. They didn't teach you that there is a skill. You stood somewhere and you sang a song. And the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again. Were they blessed? Yes. Were they embarrassed? Yes. Why? You had anointing without skill. You had access to cook for a millionaire. You would have been his personal chef. You blew that moment. You were praying in tongues in the kitchen, but there was no skill. The food burned. Everything went wrong. Skill.
Papa Adeboye said this himself. He said when the redeemed campground started, he said that they, they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place. They were more focused on the spiritual impact. So people would come, CEOs, managers, billionaires will come and sit down and heat will, will disturb them and it was making everything uncomfortable and God spoke to him and he said a CEO has AC in his office in his jeep he has AC in his parlor, bedroom, kitchen everywhere there is AC and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Skillfully dividing it. When I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people. And I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. And people are clapping. I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wow. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do. With wise counsel, make war. I know that at the end of that meeting, somebody will invite me again. It's not pride. It's the truth. You can be that confident. Skill. Please, when you go back home throughout this week, some of you, as you go home, just sit down and think of your life. Please, don't be in a hurry to sleep. You've been sleeping for years. Wake up this night and think. And say, look at how I've been playing with the opportunities God has been giving. Everything you do, nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful. They asked you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? And I was on my way going. I said, on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought out an envelope with dollars said take i said no, no 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 what is this please no no i'm not i'm not ready and she squeezed it into somebody and i said this is somebody's salary for how many months the gift of a man the skill of a man i don't talk too much about my private life but i just want to challenge you a bit it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you getting what i'm saying i hardly buy things for myself people bring it in honor skill do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you? Yes, you may be born in Nazareth, but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. 
To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. Write this down. When your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage, whatever you want to call it, when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy When your uniqueness or your strategy or as we call it in the business world your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out you can get another Joshua Selman but not easily. See that? There are many preachers but there is only one Joshua Selman. There are many anointed men but there is one Joshua Selman. No man can clone the grace. No man can, close the, can clone the skill. No man can clone the uniqueness. So you carve a niche that is free of competition. You carve a niche that is free of intimidation. You stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness. Because it's not easy to find a replacement. If you are easily replaceable, it's a sign that you will be broke. Let me tell you how you know you are not valued. Your absence is easily forgotten and ignored. When your absence is easily forgotten, when your absence is unnoticed, it's a sign that your impact is small. Yeah. If I come to work in your company, even if it is one day, I will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it. It's called value. The amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another mic. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage, and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say, when it comes to this, God has put me in a class? Void of competition. Some of you, it's only trouble that you're in a class of your own. Gossiping. All these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in a class of your own. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling. But there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? I say, uh -huh. There is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said, they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it in, with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, 
you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business. They need your news to remain relevant. Even your enemies desire you to continue. Are you that unique? Or you are just general? I'm a general businessman. General talkative. What do you sell? Television. What is unique about? Why should I come and buy TV from you and not from someone else? Do you have that uniqueness? What do you do? I plot. Who have you plotted? Many people. What is your uniqueness? Is it that you plot on time? Is it that you plot well? Is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot? What is your uniqueness? An anointing is like a mantle. It works like a charm. When it is upon your life, that anointing speaks. It's a language. It will make creation respond to you in a certain way. That's what you call favor. That's what you call breakthrough. Don't sit down asking, can I get a job? That's a very foolish question. Very foolish question. Don't sit down asking, can God make a way in the wilderness? My God, my God, my God, ah. Don't sit down asking, can I get the child? No, what you should be asking is, can I get the twins or triplets? Not, can I get the child? Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life face the business that brought you and be serious don't sit down laughing at others criticizing others others will be taking radical steps of faith don't sit down there being cynical laughing at them no connect and open up your spirit man of god open up for your ministry there can be more there can be more there can be more the pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going there is a system that builds you out even favor let me tell you this favor that we think is very free there are laws there is an unction that brings favor it is a manifestation of favor that is effortless but there is a system an exact system a science to its coming into your life hallelujah don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering can God change me are you not seeing don't you see his signature all over listen there are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom I'm rounding up now there are three platforms for reception I've taught this but let me just touch it quickly the first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom there are dimensions of the power of god that has been vested in laws you don't have to pray the moment the laws are accurately um, operated the power is released immediately you don't have to be a christian but the third dimension listen the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with god listen men enter covenants with god that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings listen to me you will never touch prosperity ignoring abraham abraham entered a covenant with god that became the platform to see that dimension of god work in your life there are men today who have covenants with god answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery to honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing god when when saul came where samuel was just that atmosphere implicated him he prophesied all kinds of things happened to him 
you need to understand that territories human beings represent systems in the kingdom and not there are certain audacious statements that when god makes he's not just waiting for your personal faith he creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant are we together now god entered a covenant with abraham is that true and then abraham slept with hagar and then had ishmael is that true they were at the wilderness crying two of them were crying god only had the cry of ishmael why because ishmael was abraham as far as the covenant was concerned so god could not listen to hagar but he had the voice of the lord crying and because of that he came let me tell you this ministry you see like cobwebs is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants mysteries and covenants agreements with god that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen i want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight you are not alone there is grace for you rise up on your feet you are mighty in this place You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Say na 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 na. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful God. Hallelujah. in one minute before we begin to minister i want you to lift your voice and tell god everything you desire for him to do don't keep quiet don't say god knows open your mouth lord step into my finances lord step into my business lord step into my family faithful god hallelujah Lord, take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening. Take away the barrier, oh God, stopping my influence. Enlarge my course. answers prayers Lord I must take my testimony tonight I'm tired of this fibroid it dies this night this night it must go this night not tomorrow Lord favor must land upon my life I'm tired of struggling Favor must come upon my life. Sikepa go soto bakata. The 
those online make sure you are praying the anointing of the spirit will reach you where you are Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me and he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies and he's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea, Kato Sotoya, divine idea. Someone has been praying, Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen, the Lord is speaking to me and this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people, listen, two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit. And I'm seeing a map. Get ready please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria. 
and I'm landing in Kaduna State. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now. By the Spirit of God. Kaduna State. Kaduna State. I see an anointing. Only Kaduna State. Shabarapakata. Embreketeta. Kaduna State. A miracle happening for Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State now. An anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete. Help them, please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to call in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? You are like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie, who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone and in the vision the lord is showing me it's like a red dress but i'll pray for you lift your hands the lord says i should tell you witchcraft ends in your family witchcraft ends in your family you will hear testimonies that will surprise you right now i stretch my hands towards you now it ends by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus johanna 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 I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time, Johanna. I don't know who that person is. Johanna, I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna, 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 Johanna. Whether you're here inside or outside. Johanna. 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 There is a lady following us from Lagos. Your name is Blessing. Your name is blessing. You are in a room. You are following from a laptop. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. It's time to command deliverance. It's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives. Forces of darkness. The Lord is bringing deliverance to your family. Your family. The Lord is bringing deliverance. I'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family. And the Lord is bringing deliverance right now. Right now to the family. Right now to the family. The Lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family a major deliverance to the family hallelujah listen listen as i begin to pray for you all those devils that has tied the lives of people it doesn't mean you are possessed it's not an insult you may not even know you may be minding yourself just like you're standing now i'm going to command those devils they must go they are not only going to live your life, they must live your family. Are we together? Listen, some of you brought many prayer lists. Just one spirit living will produce all that testimony. Believe me. Believe me. Lift your hands. My heart, my soul, 
I give to you. I bow to you, my Savior and King. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your anointing to deliver, to set free. There are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they must go. I want you to bring them out now. They must go. They must go now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. You'll be surprised to see what happens. Kai, 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 Kai. I see spirits of delay. 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 Spirits that have held men down. All kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough, 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 flowing sound, my flowing sound. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Now I command those demons, go now, go now, go now. Go now. Lift your voice and begin to command every spirit, every devil. Help them, please. Go now. I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now, inside and outside. I command you, inside and outside. Bring them out. I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice. I command you. You must go now, now, by the anointing of the Spirit. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their breakthrough. Lift your hands while still praying. Atasileka prosudo pariata katusha. Prendeka brato sokoto baleyakata. I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them. And the Lord is saying to unlock those chains. Unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus. Wherever they are. Any place in your life. That has been chained and tied. Right now in Jesus name. I command those gates be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, take it, take it, toss it, toss it, take Chains, chains, be broken. Ushers, please. Chains, be broken. In the name of Jesus. Chains, be broken. Be broken. Kalapatoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow. The roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here now. Ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed. 
listen is going to come on some people physically they will find themselves trying to run help them so that it's not like they, they won't be able to control themselves it's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody lord in the name of jesus guys be sensitive please in the name help them please it's already happening that's the instruction god is giving me an anointing will come on you physically you will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough right now lord i release that anointing give men speed give men speed give men speed 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 by the power of the holy ghost give men speed run like elijah help them run like elijah help her help her run like elijah run like elijah grace for speed i release it i release it from my spirit i release it grace for speed no more stagnation no more retrogression run with the grace of elijah overtake the chariots of ahas hallelujah charity charity are you married the lord wants to give you two miracles huh number one god wants to settle you maritally do you believe that yes sir huh yes sir second what are you doing i just finished school i'm a graduate now huh i'm a graduate now you are a graduate yes, sir. i'm looking at you and i'm seeing abuja huh yes sir abuja yes what is abuja i have a fiance yeah, you have somebody that. there yes sir. that's the person to marry you okay, did you sir. tell me no sir did you tell me no that's what i'm telling you i'm looking at you i said god will settle you amen. maritally amen huh? and then god will give you a job amen supernatural job amen because it's your desire amen god will give you a job amen the lord is saying i should prophesy to you I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past, uh -uh, your future has to change. It, the, what the past is, is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you a new chapter. A new chapter. Come, my dear, in the name of Jesus. God is giving you a job. May he connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name Charity? Is your name Charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to one more case before I pray. I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we we'll do a lot of other things. Before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout, I receive. Don't worry. Follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door of breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom Shalom You're mighty in this place Jehovah Shalom Shalom You welcome in this place I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see, 
been released to people in the realm of the spirit doors strange doors i told you there is grace for increase there is grace for increase there is grace for increase the language tonight is more 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 there is more more anointing more grace more unction more wisdom there is more there is more in the name of jesus hallelujah please drop your hands the lord is leading me to pray for brothers lift your hands you'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now hmm. the lord wants to release grace for establishment listen there is such an anointing don't be foolish receive it receive it with all your spirit there is a spirit especially in this side of the north men get established very late very late very late you make money late you build a house late it's a bad spirit god wants to release something those online you can follow i want to pray i see this thing falling on many men jesus it is your word you have released this word i put authority upon this prophecy and i declare let it enter like an arrow into the life of men right now take it receive that grace right now receive it in the name of jesus at the count of three one two three take it now take it now help them grace grace strange establishment doors opening doors opening in their own accord help them doors opening i put you in a platform spiritually where you experience speed and establishment in the name of jesus help them please so they don't enjoy themselves my god be established be established be established be established i lose your hands i untie your hands every brother here i untie your hands be established by the spirit be established by the spirit go and buy that land by the spirit go and build that house by the spirit i open strange doors don't say you are too young is an anointing it's not your effort receive it in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now leave those who are standing here very quickly if you are here specifically please listen you are here specifically trusting god to stamp the feet of satan in your family over the issue of children you know god announced beginning of october that the theme for this miracle service you've had the testimonies please don't say they have prayed for me before don't allow that unbelief destroy you are we together while you are coming there is a lady who will shout under the anointing it is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness it's a loud shout it will be loud enough for everyone to hear by the spirit in the name of jesus christ lord we give you praise that's a shout there that's a shout by the spirit there is an anointing to pray for the barren come please all those whether man woman if you are married look don't come out here if you are not married why are they here why are they all here you must be married except if you are standing in for someone don't stand here doubting there is an anointing i see a river some of you as you are standing right now the power of god will come on you just before i even start praying yeah. look at this will you open up the gate open up the door will you open up the gate open up the door lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart will you open up the gate for you by 
by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low sperm count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child No matter what the spirit is, no matter what the issue is, fibroid, infertility, low sperm count, whatever, I don't care what the name is, it must live right now. In the name of Jesus, please shift very quickly. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Now, go and carry your miracle child. Madam, carry your miracle baby. Carry it now. Carry it now. My God, I tell you, I see babies literally in the realm of the spirit. Carry it now. Carry it now. Shaba Ratosia. Carry it right now. Carry it right now. Miracle. 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 Shata da 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 balada. Regete gete gete. There is an unusual grace here. There is an unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace, grace. Shabala da bala da ba. Rekete kete. Embro toko toba da bala da ba. Shabara da bala da ba. Grace, grace, grace. Help them, please. Let's save time. Grace, receive your miracle, baby. My God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus, bring it. In the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now. Right now. 
right now, right now, right now. Let it be open in the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 grace. Shebara do bara 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 bara. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Eko to shobara raba. The Lord is healing irregular menstruation. Irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now, so that you can carry your baby. Receive your child out, out of her. spirit don't just watch miracles 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 in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus supernatural miracles the Lord is anointing you receive that anointing now the mighty name of Jesus Christ grace 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 for you grace for you grace for you grace for you Grace, 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 grace. Open, open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka para no kato kate ne ba 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 ba. Emprete koto. Lekete kota shike. Shike 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 shike. Rapa to koto shike te ne mo. Emprete kato. for you I want a woman to come up yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant you have been having nightmares somebody comes to you in the night you have you even wake up shouting you've not been able to sleep there is a pregnant woman here with that situation God wants to set you free please where are you if you care for you can come and God will set you free right now you are pregnant but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams like a nightmare Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself, for someone. Shela kurata subrege di balalaba. Emre koto shikala bariada subrati shikaria. Rendo salebrati shikaria di balalaba. Ambroto subroto shobre dege di balalaba. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing, like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living a real object please who is that i have to pray for you like i said if you have the courage there's nothing to be ashamed what who is this one why is she here coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital 
so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say this is bad it's like a doctor madam Kai. and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because i'm looking at you you are supposed to be a very great woman i look at you and i see somebody ah this is strange i'm seeing let me show you what i'm seeing i'm looking at this and i'm seeing witchcraft from delta state i'm seeing you but i'm seeing a white woman i'm seeing a white woman but i'm seeing you and the lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman that's the vision that i'm saying say jesus is lord jesus is lord i didn't know that look at me my dear, look at me because i'm seeing this you look far 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 older than your age somebody even see you and say mommy there's no mommy anything you need prayers because you too are you married you are trusting god for a life partner it's even why you came here look at this the devil is a liar see i prophesy to you in the name of jesus christ the spirit of the waster that will want your life to keep going without achievement i'm praying for you now may that devil live your life forever in the name of jesus the spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of jesus i use her as a point of contact this is a nice woman she didn't bargain for this and she loves god are you seeing that now who knows probably we're trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently but everything grounded hold my hand man to a point that that do you know what it means another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile low i'm not talking of pile hold my hands my hands i'm angry in my spirit in the name of the lord god that i serve i speak to you from the depth of my spirit right now i command that devil let her go now out out in the name of jesus i lay my hands on your stomach i command that wicked spirit whatever your name is don't only leave her pack your load with you and go out of this woman's life I restore you even physiologically in the name of Jesus Christ this old face is not your own you are not that old I change it in the name of Jesus Christ help her give Jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of jesus christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of jesus over in the name of jesus it's over in the name of jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here i'm seeing in a vision the power of god will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but i'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for god's sake father take her to that level i stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace and i bring you to that realm release miracles to women in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please help her in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ supernatural supernatural 
Daddy, why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir, for barrenness. You, where is your wife, sir? He's here, but I can't locate her. Now. Madam, come. You will see a man like hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real, our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. Listen, sir. I'm not saying God told me to tell you. I am telling you. There is something called a prophet's reward. In the name that is above all names, I speak over your life. That force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity, I cancel it right now. Sir, you are struggling financially. I have to pray for you. God wants to open a door for you. I, I hope you are not embarrassed sir, that I'm talking to you. Please hold my hands. Jesus, please change our daddy's story. Let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, please, we're going to be very fast. You are here for yourself. You are not married. You are standing for something. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural miracle. Now, we are going to be very fast. You can see it's past nine, but there are so many things we need to do. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who are here trusting God for any miracle, any miracle aside from barrenness, except if you have another thing, I don't care what it is. Please, you are going to come. There are men of God here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly. It's a miracle service. Now, look at this. I want you to organize yourself. Uh, those outside, hold on, please, hold on overflow two just walk right to the front you don't have to come here overflow two. the whole of those occupying the roadside just walk right to the front of your your stage there overflow one here just walk right to the front here all those who are here you can just come out come out organize yourself you are sick or you are standing in for people jesus listen if you are standing here for impartation go back please 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 don't make a fool of yourself we are going to pray for i know some of you just want me to touch you there's nothing wrong with you don't play games with god go back to your seat you will receive impartation some of you there's nothing wrong you just want in case if there's something i should still pray go back please we don't have that time 
are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people have you noticed that in the last one month there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses someone who just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again that devil is a liar in the name of jesus and i also understand they've been mysterious accidents you are minding your business car will jam you bike will jam you we are going to take care of all those things today it's called a miracle service now this is what will happen please and please anybody who lays hands on you just go back to your seat believing in faith we don't have time to take testimonies i know there are so many miracles if we do that we're going to spend time here there are other things we need to do are we together now so i will pray for you you can see there are so many people uh let's do it this way pastor pete is with me here so um pastor pete ah no edgy you know what edgy pastor femi you can go outside you can just handle that that one there pastor alpha pastor alpha kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor edgy and you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just I don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you we are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise west promise join a jimmy promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol they, so that don't waylay anybody please behave yourself don't disturb anybody i'm here with pastor pete benga we're going to pray in the name that is above all names shout amen, amen. father we're standing in unity from three different points you have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people lord every man of god represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the holy ghost is there he's representing us and he will touch you while that is happening concurrently please your miracle um uh your prayer request pass it ushers if you can connect yourself i know that there are not many of you protocol you can help them please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it first jesus will give you praise i have no other god but you now i have no as they pray for you just quietly go back to your seat rejoicing go back to your seat check yourself i
make sure you sub make sure you're submitting your prayer requests make sure you're submitting your prayer requests and then when they pray for you you don't have to go back to another line once they pray for you i'd like you to believe in the same god is doing miracles pass your prayer requests I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason 
the Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before, before we come to prayer. I know there are people, how far have we gone? Those outside, there's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jakes. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one. And then, um, ushers, please, let's have the request so that we can finish it because I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. season for you. Some of my worship people here, the Lord will place upon you an unction for worship. A strong unction. David Dan, the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing. An anointing it will come upon you. Pare sufretinda ilo sipredia. Rekito fiesta kila handa ha Bora kete shubelenda pragadose Rekete gabaka kokosho ke palagana Renda pa freia so palenda ha Resa profilesta kalionde Parasoko palagada I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground It will come upon the feet of many now Upon the feet of many The fire of God will come upon your feet the fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire a quickening. My God. Palio friesa kiata la ronte. Barus i cateli. Bo grakisti valande calevose.
tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend, bringing messages to you tonight. 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 Tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are standing here in the midst of Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, we build your throne. And as we worship you, Jesus, and take, take your, your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We are going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We are praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in your divine wisdom. When you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will. Lord you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein oh God. Your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here. Those that are across the world. From the internet. They have written their own requests, understanding the mystery of the scribes. That whatever is written has a spiritual significance. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men. The angels in Revelation chapter 8, that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of God. Right now, by the power of God, let those angels move swiftly in the name of Jesus. An angel appeared unto Daniel and said, I have come because of your word. 
Father, let the angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, he that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God, with results and answers. And the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now, we release grace. And Lord, we release mercy. In the name of Jesus. Every prayer written in this ground, upon this mountain, it is answered in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Aside from those, they are still praying for peace. Everybody rise up. Please rise up quickly. Rise up to receive a prophecy and the impartation. Two things we'll do at once, just two, three minutes, and then we're done. Please make sure you wait to the end of the service so that you listen to every announcement. I want to pray. We want to, every miracle service is a platform to activate grace. You have seen certain dimensions of God, but there's more. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you and I'll join it with the prophecy. This is the second to the last miracle service for the year. So don't be careless about it. Open up your spirit. There are people here who have been crying and say, Lord, I know there can be a new dimension of grace. I have seen your hand in my life, but I want to see a greater level. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Drink of a new fountain of grace. Help him, please. Drink of a new fountain of grace. I activate the gifts of the spirit at the count of four. One, two, three, four. Step into it. Eyes be open, ears open. Receive impartations. Receive impartations. Receive grace, grace. Impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The kind of favor that you have not seen from the start of this year till now. On this mountain tonight, I invoke it upon your spirit. May that favor come upon you. I call the heavens to bear witness that you are a carrier of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Where it has worked for others and has refused to work for you, I declare the grace that makes things work the power of performance. Receive it right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Everything dead in your life. I don't care what and I don't care how long. In the name of the one who raised from the dead. I command that thing to come back to life. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. Tonight, like Pastor Jake prayed, revelations of strategies from the realm of the spirit. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Supernatural impartation. I pray for you. Everyone here who wants to start a business, start a company, start something, any value adding platform. I prophesy upon you the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it every student here hear me I program your spirit to rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus on common understanding on common illumination any final year student here who it looks as if you are not going from the look of things in the name of Jesus we change it here right now believe God we change it now we change it now we change it from your faculty 
we change it from your department by the authority of the kingdom in the name of Jesus anyone here carrying any track record of bad luck it works for others until it gets to your turn then there must be stories I separate you and bad luck forever I separate you and tragedy forever hallelujah this spirit that came to Zaria that is causing men to be sick hear my voice there is a platform where ambassadors are in this kingdom therefore i stand apostolically and prophetically we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and we banish such operations in the name of jesus may you and your kind be banished from this city in the name of jesus that spirit that brings accident and untimely death looming around our territory no 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 zaria is a place of light it's not the place where any spirit will come and loom and i speak prophetically across this place every spirit of untimely death hear my voice in the name of jesus i command the gates closed over you i command the gates closed over you not by accident not by bomb blast the gate closes over you everything that has left your hand that left your life that should not have left i don't care where it went to i call it back may it gather its kind and come to you i say it again everything that has left your life has left your hands may it gather its kind and return back to you listen anyone here who the devil has taunted spiritually financially in influence you are not rising for whatever reason in the name of jesus i force you to rise in the name of Jesus, I force you to grow. If there is anybody in this place, from January till now, you have not stood here to testify, I prophesy to you, now and the next 30 days, may it be your turn to stand here. Believe me, believe me, now and the next 30 days, may you stand here to testify anyone here called jobless or you are doing a job that is not a job any nonsense thing around that is not bringing you tangible sizable benefit in the name of jesus i don't know where the jobs are we create vacancies and put you there we create vacancies and put you there any man or woman who said over his dead body for you to succeed i declare their prayers answer tonight i declare their prayers answer tonight i pray for you listen there is a mantle of honor upon this house and if you belong to this family it should be evident in your life and in case it's not yet working like a programming in a computer like an antivirus i place that mantle of honor upon you may it shield you from shame may it cover ta -ta 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 -ta. may it shield you from shame hallelujah every spiritual life that has died here no more passion for the things of god no more passion for prayer no more passion for the word of god i plant in you a fresh passion tonight fresh passion tonight we're rounding up every family represented here 
that has not had a reason to smile this year it's been tears and tears from home every time they call you from home one episode of bad luck may this be the first good news you will hear good news of breakthrough good news of increase good news of speed in the name of Jesus Christ whoever rises up to find you may the God that I serve even in the secret may he fight them we're rounding up I pray for you barrenness or its kind looming around your life looming around your environment whether in your body whether in your finances whether in the works of your hands in your ministry in your business I pray for you the water that flows that makes the barren plant to receive strength and begin to rise and become a great tree I introduce that water into your life therefore I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus be fruitful be fruitful multiply multiply replenish subdue and may you command absolute dominion absolute dominion help them please every strange nightmare strangers roaming around your sleep not allowing you to enjoy the sleep that the saints should enjoy disturbing you oppressing you sleeping with you manipulating your dreams confusing you you don't know whether it's god speaking or it's the devil in the name of jesus i banish those strangers from your life forever i banish those strangers from your life forever in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally for you there is a spirit of increase there is a spirit that causes men to prosper there is a mantle that brings wealth from the east the north the south you have the value but you need the access you have the value already you are not a non-entity you already have what to give but the other side of the exchange is what you are looking for from the east to the west to the north to the south whoever must show up in your life in the next 30 days to be a ladder for you to climb to the next level I prophesy and I call them into your destiny I prophesy and I call them into your destiny there's someone here God is giving you a word go and register a company and just keep it you may not know what to do with it but just keep it keep it and give God space to use it and surprise you that's a prophetic word for somebody here just register it and keep it you there is no business to source for don't worry register it and keep it and give God space to surprise you may that happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ every circle of continual suffering where you think you are about to rise up another episode of trouble I declare where the devil put a comma I change it to a full stop never again never again never again in the name of jesus christ you're here you need jesus you're saying man of god i've watched the things that the holy spirit has done i have seen the transformation keep standing please no sitting no moving around let's stand up please keep standing you are here and you are saying apostle i want you to pray for me i love jesus christ but for some reason my life has gone haywire. I cannot say that I'm truly enjoying relationship and fellowship with him. And there are others who are saying, man of God, this is the first time. I've always mocked at the things of God. I've never really been serious. But now, I'm making up my mind for Jesus. Overflow 1, overflow 2, all following us online. Wherever you are, I know that our time is gone, but let's honor Jesus. 
we cannot end this meeting without giving this opportunity wherever you are don't wait for anybody to come be the first i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here i want to lead you to jesus jesus is already talking to some people god bless you as you come god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are people outside run like there's fire on the mountain don't stroll around run like there's fire on the mountain one i'll count one to five and that will be it. two lord i give you my three please we're out of time run run to jesus i live for a fresh start a new beginning will you have your way hallelujah if you are still coming please rush and join them it should not take a long time if you are still indecisive then just remain at your seat by now you should know where you stand when the titanic sank there were only two lists those who were saved those who were lost if you are not sure you are saved come out and join them because it means that you are not you are not saved you should be very sure with your man of god is like i think i'm safe come and join them and get a very uh, a, a high level of certainty to know that you are in christ in the name of jesus i appreciate everyone daddy thank you for coming and all those who have come to make this decision please understand you are not reciting a poem don't be emotional about it this is a simple decision but it's the greatest miracle you are opening up your heart to the life of god the bible says and this life is in his son it says he that hath the son hath eternal life say this after me with all your heart and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart tonight i come to you and i declare that you receive my life and manage it for me i receive your life into my spirit i declare that from today jesus is my lord my savior my friend and my king i declare that satan has no power over my life i'm a child of god i'm born again in the name of jesus christ father i stretch my hands towards these great precious people bless them let this decision be genuine and let this be the beginning of great days in their lives i anoint you with grace I command that you begin to see the faithfulness and the goodness of God in the land of the living. I plant in you like a virus, a hunger for the things of God. And I declare that it will override every other passion in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision that you have made. Now hold on please. I want you to do two things for me. Number one, the Bible says, They that be planted in the house of the Lord, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God visiting the house of god is not the key to consistency you must settle down and receive the word our prayer meetings um tuesdays except for this week we're making a little adjustment i'm going to bring an announcement on that shortly but you can be part of it for at least one month so that you can build your spiritual life and then i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details and then they'll warmly follow you up on our behalf and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Please, this way, all of you, God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body soul and to your spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.